I was given a task 21 years ago. And that task is not an easy task for me to do. I was asked, at the time I was a member of the Hulu Movement, uh, Mount Yes Intelligence Movement, I was asked by some people to ex Black Panther Party members and stuff that if I wanted to understand what goes on in prison, I need to go explore the prison system. Because a lot of people who have never been to prison really don't understand and have a clue of what prison is about. Saying that I was reluctant to take the task, but I wound up joining corrections, and I spent 21 years there as a supervisor, learning everything I could about corrections. I'm probably one of the few people in the state of Rome that has federal certification and works at the state level. I've since then retired. In 2011, I retired. That's where I met Marshall A. Conway inside the prison system. And I met him twice. And sister, who I, I have no problem mentioning her name, sister Annie Chisawati, she was like a mother to me. She was a mentor. She was also a former Black Panther Party member. She was the one that gave me that task. I took that, like I said, I took that task with a hard pill to swallow because I ain't by no firm love with uh, a love of the police department, TIG, whatever you want to call them. I just ain't, I just ain't down with this. I don't love it at all. If they was to fall off the Empire State Building tomorrow, I'd probably be down there selling tickets. <laughs> I don't have no love for them. But I think that being said, a lot of people have a misconception about prison. Yeah. Inside the prison system, I've met some of the most intellectual, mm -hmm. most smartest people, most dedicated people I've ever seen in my life. This is true. I was approached after I retired by a brother by the name of Nami Lumumba to come back into the movement. Actually, I was on the verge of retirement. I hadn't been retired yet. He said, well, man, give me your answer. I said, hold on, let me give you the answer, man. I, it was a weekend, I'll never forget this. I picked up the phone, I had a cell phone. I picked up that phone, dialed the number, and I said, um, I need a personal favor. I need somebody to tell me how many years I got in. I said, well, you military time, you got 20 some years. I said, look, I'll be in first thing Monday morning, start putting my, my resignation paper. I hung up the phone, I gave him an answer right there. I said, don't take me 30 seconds. Y'all got me back in the movie. From that time on, I began working on Eddie Conway's case. This time for everybody to get me, good luck. Well, hopefully, you know, next year or two, I'll be calling Dr. Lee. Yeah, Dr. Lee. So, through her and, and Nami, I began working on Eddie's case. We did, we worked on Eddie's case for about four years. In yeah, about four years, we, we do fundraising and stuff. We felt that it was important to educate the people about Eddie Conway because really there was no work being done about Eddie's case. Everybody was going on the evil. I mean, it's a sad thing. You got a little prison in your own state. Yeah. You don't do no work around, but you go to everywhere else to go support little prison, but you don't do no work around your own prison in right. your own state. You should be doing it. I, I, I had a problem with that. So we began working around this case. Later on, I would run into Conrad Seaman's husband, Najee, and Freedom. I still remember that day like it's a fresh day. Najee and them came over, made a personal trip over to Baltimore, Baltimore City. You remember that, Najee? You all came over there? From that day on, I became interested in Jericho work. I later on joined Jericho with the blessings of Jihad and Paul and everybody. This comrade needs you here being the co-chair, because he definitely was pushing for it. We opened up a Jericho chapter. We've been working differently on political prisoners' cases. Right after that, this comrade right here, Sister Boo, I was approached by them about black office. Remember I do support. Uh, I'll probably give back. I wind up working with black artists, and I'm going to tell you right now, if there's one word that the prison system fears, it's black artists. Yeah. They lock the jails down all across the United States that have lost artists. I wind up having 
much love and respect for them comrades inside the back office because I can still work with them. I'm currently involved in a case out in Pelican Bay about them not them attacking the brothers because of the ideology of George Jackson and also because of the fact that they're attacking these brothers because of the fact that all of them stood up on the California hunger strike. Mm -hmm. I've also worked behind the scenes. Uh, Jamil asked me, Jamil Luther King, he asked me to write uh, a report to the governor, Governor Como, about the parole situation. I went on the road before with God had to And I worked on a few other little cases. I, when Dr. Tools before approached me and Conrad Regal, I had all the correspondence with him. And he approached us and sent us the literature on, it was on the TLC process, right? Yeah. 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 It was on the TLC process. We got that literature, we read that literature. It, it's, the literature I have right here is actually three parts. Yeah. We read it. Me and her sat down and sort of debated yeah. about certain things. We shared what we had with the National, National Jericho movement. And um, we began to look at things we seen where certain things wasn't, just wasn't happening. You can break these cases individually for the next 20, 30 years. And let's see how many people we get out of there. Hey, what's that? They ain't, they, they don't release political prisoners in the United States. When they do, they, re, they release them, and most of them come out on Okay, that's cool. Just like the bottom line. Which means, you know, you can get an indeterminate sentence. You just like the bottom line. line. These comrades, some of these comrades have been sitting there for 40 years, all over. This process that the Matuza Corps has came up with is, I would have to say, is the best process that I've ever read. Because it gives a, it, it don't bring one political prisoner home. It brings all of them home. And that's what I'm working for. I don't want to hear about, uh, we're just going to bring this one home, because I'm, I'm not interested in bringing one. I want all of them out. I think Lily Peltier has been in there too long. I think Jaleel Luther King has been in there too long. I think Mahmoud Abu Jamal has been in there too long. We just got Seiko Kambui just came home. We had Geronimo Pratt come home. We seen Marlon Buck come home. We seen these people come home, but they come home with sicknesses and they don't live long. The healthcare system and the prison system is non existent. It's not exist. They don't even exist. I ain't gonna lie to you. You can stand on your, your door cell and bang on your door cell, the kingdom come. If you get somebody to help you, you can come. These political prisoners, I've always said, how can you build a movement inside the United States talking about self determination, freedom of liberation, you don't do nothing for your, those people to pay the way? When you sit in colleges like this, for you to Get on a bus for you to have civil rights. You need even to stand up there and utter the words black power, for who, freedom. How can you do that? Now, sister, y'all just seen the video on the side of the court. I've studied, read by her since I was, I have to say, like 16, 17 years old. I've read everything I can find on that. You can't have, I'm telling you right now, it's a joke. You can't have no movement if you don't see these people. They pay the way. They pay the way. One day in jail is too long. They don't get decades in jail. If we don't bring them home, what does that say about each and every one of us here in this room? It says a lot. It says a lot. Not only inside this room, but outside this room. It says a lot. It tells me. Not interested in prison rights. Not interested in giving respect to those who came before you. You're not interested in real freedom of liberation. You're not interested in real social change. You're not. And 
not my people. Because you eat well, and they don't eat well. You've got a right to get medical. They don't have a right to get medical. Because that's how the jails treat you. Am I lying to you, when you, when you was locked up, was it easy to go get seen by a medical physician? When you was locked up, child, was it easy? Was it easy to have your mail not read by other people? Because see, in jail, you don't have the right. You don't have the problem. I'm going to tell you, they photograph everything that goes into a political prisoner. They make copies of it. Mm -hmm. Some of those political prisoners got milk crates. Yes. I'm, when I say, I'm not talking about one milk crate. I'm talking about milk crates. Full of their documentation off the documents. They don't have the same liberty. On August 23rd, one day after 26 year, I guess for lack of a better word, anniversary of Dr. Huey P. Newton's death, assassination, that's what it really was. We, we sat down, me, Paulette, Conrad Vigil, Sid Wilson, Temple was right there. Who was the dude from the UN? Tomas was here. Yeah, from Tomas. Who was the dude that was from the UN? Called him. The dude that Patulu had recommended. Oh yes, the man from the, uh, from Washington, uh, LA, who was a human rights lawyer. Right. He helped him on his parole. We we sat down and on that day, the National Coalition for Truth and Reconciliation Commission was formed. They actually became a legal entity. I was selected by my, my comrades to be the national chair. I, I had to tell me two ago, Paul, that, that I'm on the intern chair person until he come home. Right, that's right. Because when he come home, this is his process. I'm the intern chair. Okay. I don't want to get it twisted. I'll just put his shoes until he get here. Because he has a vision. He needs to see his vision fulfilled. He does have a vision. His vision is to bring home everybody. Since, that, since we've been holding these meetings around the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, I've seen things that I never thought I'd see. And that's due to the work of comrades here in this room, especially Paulette, Jahad, Tomah, Amidu, Freedom, Nahid, Tomah's white jam. <laughs> We've seen, I've seen, honestly, I have. I've seen Seiko and Daniel be considered for parole. Mm -hmm. I've seen Suni Adekola be considered for parole. Yep. Also seen the other side of it. I've seen when we had the Jamal, First Amendment rights to be suppressed, taken away. I've seen the move now come and go for parole. I don't know how, what is it? How many they got? It was nine, they got Nine of them in there, right? Eight, Eight still alive. Yeah. Tomorrow. I think it's almost, it's, maybe I'm wrong, somebody can tell me physics is right. But I don't think it's right. One gun, nine people, nine people right. fit inside of the trigger. They get 30 years to 100 years each. Each. Inside of the prison system. I, I used to be a firearm instructor, so I'm telling you. I put my finger here, Tomas put his finger there, Jan put her finger there, Sister Luigi. It's not going to work. It ain't, 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 it Exactly, they didn't fight for him. I'm saying, but where's the proof? You got Mohamed well, Abu Jamal, he's in jail, was in, on death row, got off of death row, given life in prison. He's fighting to come home. The dude who did somebody confess to that murder? Yes. Yeah, I thought so. They confessed to that murder. He's still sitting in there. His testimony don't mean nothing. He 
You can understand that kind of part in the Bible. Very probably able to prove it. Which is 10 years old. Because of his job, what's his skills? He is a dangerous. He ain't dangerous to me. He's a dangerous to the United States government. Because see, this government is pressing him. It ain't about this government. There's no such thing as democracy in America. Don't, don't get it. Don't, I don't want y'all to go believe me or confuse. There's no such thing as democracy in America. It doesn't exist. That's what know. It's a two party system a fox and a wolf. They both eat up people that you see. It ain't just about color. They eat up anybody that speaks up against Absolutely. this government here. I'm, I'm telling you what I know. It's true. There's no such thing about food. Dr. Dr. Patoon came up with three things that I thought that were unique, and I'm going to share them with you. Because he pointed out something that we had to realize. First thing you need to understand about amnesty, I mean, our uh, TRC process, it's, it's governed by two things. Amnesty, and amnesty under the original TRC doctrine, Requires both parties to come together and be given amnesty for their crimes. You can't have, I can't give amnesty to you for a bunch of police. You kill people, you jail people, you framed them, you did all that, there'd be no amnesty for them. Not not you. Maybe in your view, I, I just can't, I can't see it. I'd be damn going to follow that too. I can't see it. I'm not, I don't do amnesty that way. I think that you can give amnesty to all the prisoners. I think you can give amnesty to all those people you are unjustly incarcerated. Uh, you can give amnesty to all the people that you got in exile. Because we talk about Cuba. We don't talk about uh, uh, P. O'Neill and them over there in Tanzania, Africa. We don't talk about them. Mm -hmm. You want to give some amnesty? Give an amnesty to them. You want to give any type of amnesty to police? Lock them up. Lock them up. Lock all of them. I wouldn't care. Lock them up. So all, so all the people should be given reparations. Everyone that got locked up should be given money. Absolutely. They should be given an automatic pardon. The United States government should get on their knees and beg their forgiveness. That would be nice. Hey, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth. They should, they should beg for their forgiveness. I mean, think about it. I illegally incarcerate you, frame you, do all this stuff, destroy your family, destroy your community, and then I come to you and say, you know what, comrade, you don't did enough time for I know I'm releasing you come home and die on your bed, you know. Don't worry about that. So what you did 40 some years illegally? Just be glad that you did now. Oh, by the way, before you get your freedom, you need to sign this document saying that you won't sue us. That's how they get these people out. I said give all these people an amnesty. Let them have their amnesty. Pay them reparations. Apologize. Get on your knees and apologize. And it's also hypocritical in the way Nelson Mandela was used in his passing, mm -hmm. considering the United States Into you know, him eight. as a terrorist yeah. and played a major role in his, in incarceration. his incarceration, yeah. as well as the murder of Steve Biko Steve and Biko, other yeah. African nationalists across the country, well, across the continent, um, and the country of South Africa. So it's hypocritical that you know the U.S. government would that be on the side and say things about a former. We got criminals. We got terrorists. Yeah, domestic terrorists. You know, the definition of terrorism, if you actually look it up, it applies to the United States government. Mm -hmm. Damn. You know, I mean, Malcolm said it. What did Malcolm say? You don't have to be locked up in, in behind bars and realize that you're incarcerated. Because you're incarcerated just like those people in jail if you on the street. I, I see it. I see it every day. People get evicted. They get Railroad, you know, here the Black Panther Party was when they was established. You know the most dangerous program they had? Breakfast program. Breakfast program, feeding people. Now, how is that a danger? I'm feeding you. Empowering the community. They were, they were empowering the community. But see, there's one thing about it when you feed somebody, you gain their recognition, you gain their love, their trust, and judgment. 
That is dangerous. Because now what you're doing is you're bringing up little revolutionaries to be big revolutionaries. Sometimes we turn around and we, you, we don't understand the struggle of, or the period that came before. Mm -hmm. We need to understand that. Because the connection between political prisoners and mass incarceration exists. Oh, yeah, that's that. 1968, I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, the called Dick. The name was uh, Nixon. President Nixon, 1968, came up with something. He said, you want to know what the problem is? It's really black. Really the black. They incarcerate them. They really probably do it in a way that they don't know about. In a way, don't bring change to our government. That, have you seen the destruction of the Black Panther Party, BLA, the RNA, and all these other organizations that are out here fighting? Not just for the liberation of black people, but for the liberation of humanity. Have you seen? And then all of a sudden we see a whole creation of a new, uh, for lack of a better word, a new humble class, they say. And then you took the prisoners. What is that entail? The United States government wasn't prepared for the response. Because, see, through the political prisoner process, we had more people in jail became politicized. They became educated. <clears throat> they came, some of the people came out. I began to do the same work for my people. They came out and started working for the liberation of other people. For the betterment of society, making a change. So don't let, don't let nobody tell you that there wasn't things that was done. What greater right can a person have than to be created in the kingdom? America's involved in war, human rights violations than any country in the world. We got more people locked up here in this country what is it, 2.3 million people, 2.4? Something like that. 2.7 million children go to bed every night. They got a parent incarcerated. One of them. You know, what do you think that the incarceration of parents does? You know, let alone to these political prisoners who watch their children grow up, and most of them got grandchildren. I mean, Leo I'm, has a great granddaughter. Right. What did Mamie say when he seen his granddaughter? Remember when he came out without oh, chains on? Yeah. She was shocked. Because she didn't understand about chains. Yeah. Can you imagine? Have any of y'all been in prison and visited somebody? I know. I don't, I don't see a lot of things that I don't like about prison. Have you? Have been in prison and visited anybody? You? You and I? You sister Kelly? I know Paul Eddie. She, she travels all over. So, Mars, you seen? You seen it, eh? Yes. You free? Sister Baruchi, you seen it? You man, you seen it? I guarantee you, take a visit and go visit somebody in prison. And you'll, you'll, the world that you see on TV, totally it'll totally change your whole perception. You'll leave out of there just after one visit. I guarantee you'll leave out of there and hit the prison system. Because they put you through the most humiliating thing I've ever seen. Yeah. They treat you like you come to visit a family member like you dirty. Inside the prison system, it's a lot of dudes. You can come to the city, they tell you I fought against a lot of that stuff. I was looking at the exile in the moment. Call officer. They was like, no, we care too much about it. But they call in. We free our political prisoners today. What do you think that's going to do for the transformation of our community? Mm -hmm. A lot of these political prisoners are mental. What do you think that's going to do? Can you imagine waking up, seeing these political prisoners out there, educating the youth? Mm -hmm. It'd be separate. Balance is now cut down. They're talking about showing people how to become self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. See, I, I believe the, the, the food, the breakfast program is a good idea, but I think we need to take it to the next level. We need to show people how to grow God, yeah. how to establish food co-ops. Stop depending on this government. Absolutely. I'm trying to say people out here can be done. This is things that I learned from reading, talking to David Gilman, to Lil Luther King. I'm telling you, some of these people that are locked up, they need to be running this government. Mm -hmm. They are the most scientific, most brilliant people out there.
ever read about or ever had a chance to communicate? Communicate with them. Jabbar, do you have any more? Yeah, I got more right here. Okay. Because, uh, we want y'all to fill these out, but I was going to give them to me at the end of it. Oh, well, I want people to be able to ask you some questions, okay. to read the over and so uh, that okay. they actually break down some of the stuff that you've been talking about and then pull your things, because you know freedom is here.